Let's rotate the patient to her left, please. The brain has a very complicated anatomy, and it's very delicate. The cranial nerves are like wet tissue paper. Many times the pathology that we deal with is tough and fibrous. So you're in the position of having to remove tough and fibrous pathology from around very delicate critical structures that can be soft. <laughs> the more we can bring technology into that very critical environment, I think the better we will be. We're trying to bring in other lines of information that make it a little safer to do these procedures. The analogy would be a GPS that we use in our car. Uh, we know more or less where we're supposed to go much of the time, but if we have a map that's updated in real time and we can see the position of our car in relation to that map while we're driving, it can make the, the drive a little more efficient uh, maybe even a little safer. By integrating the navigation and simulation through the eyepieces of the captive view, we can project that heads-up display into the eyepieces while I'm operating. We can now track the position of the microscope and relate it not just to the position of the scope, but the focal point of the eyepieces. So what that means is the microscope knows where I am looking, where my eyes are looking because I'm always looking through the eyepieces where the microscope is focused. So this is a very big advance, and this is called microscope integration. You operate with far greater confidence and visual spatial awareness if you've brought that simulation into the operating room and you can see right through the tumor to where the carotid artery is. So if we look into the very near future, we will see that computer rendered three-dimensional scenarios will be brought into the operating environment to augment the reality that we have during surgery.